He called them dark stars, but he emphasized that nature could never be as strange as his theory. As it turned out, his nightmarish imaginings were exactly right. There is a kind of star that grows so heavy that it collapses inward, then blows up. The mass of many suns is sucked down to a tiny point, a terrible dark vortex, a black hole. Black holes are where gravity's gone bad. If you fell in towards a black hole, the gravity is so severe and changes, increases so rapidly that there's going to be a point in a feet-first dive where your feet will be pulled towards the black hole faster than your head. Eventually you snap into two pieces. The tidal forces stretch you. You snap into two pieces, and the two remaining pieces, they themselves snap into two pieces. And so you bifurcate your way all the way down to the singularity that is the center of the black hole, and you end up becoming a stream of atoms flying through space, descending to the bottom of that abyss. So you're being funneled down as the fabric of space gets narrower and narrower. So this is sometimes called spaghettification. Uh, I think of it as just extruding toothpaste through a tube. That's what would happen to your body's atoms. I think about that often. There aren't just one or two black holes out there. In our galaxy alone, there may well be millions. Many exist in the dense hothouse of the galaxy center. In this image from the Chandra X-ray telescope, each point of light is a collapsed star that is lighting up as it devours a companion star. But there is another object here that is far more potent. Not just a black hole, a monstrous, supermassive black hole. Scientists are urgently trying to find out more about it. For over a decade, a team led by UCLA's Eric Becklin has been searching for it, deep in the center of the galaxy. I believe that we don't know everything by a lot. We never would have predicted that there is a black hole in the galactic center, that the stars are moving around it at speeds of 1% the speed of light. Uh, I just would never have thought that that was going to be the case. It's not easy to find this monster, much less study it. The astronomers can only glimpse it by tracking nearby stars. These stars are circling the supermassive black hole whipping around it at enormous speeds. The acceleration tells you where the black hole is. So each star says the black hole is there, and the next star says the black hole is there. So if you can find the intersection, you've actually precisely located where the black hole is. The basic tool of their hunt is the Keck telescope, the largest in the world unrivaled in its power to magnify light signals from the most distant points in the universe. The team begins by aligning Keck's immense 30-foot mirror to ensure a near-perfect image. Then they fix on a bright star near the galactic center, a guide star, that will allow them to lock on to their target. We're looking and a patch on the sky that corresponds to a rock on the moon. So if you think about the moon on the night sky, the moon extends, you know, if you put your thumb out, you, that's about the size of the moon at arm's length. And we, we're looking at a part of the moon that corresponds to the size of a rock. Using the Keck telescope, they're peering into a pinhole at a region not much larger than our solar system, filled with stars. For us, they're just signposts to where the center is. And what we're really interested in is in watching the motion of these stars around the uh, massive object or black hole that we now know is right here in the galactic center. 
According to the team's data, this black hole is three million times the weight of the sun, compressed down to a size smaller than a speck of dust. It's among the largest and most powerful objects in the universe. With the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy and in most galaxies that we've observed, you can think of them as a, as a hungry dragon. It's sitting there with its mouth open. Now, it doesn't reach out and grab you, but if you happen to fly a little too close, it's got you, and it'll eat you whole, it'll shred you apart, it, it'll, there's no hope for your survival if, they, if you get too close. The astronomers are hunting this dragon, seeking clues to its turbulent past. It may have begun as a smaller black hole that gobbled its neighbors, reaching an enormous size. Or it could have formed earlier as gigantic gas clouds crashed together to form the galaxy. We may never know. For deep within the bulge, the shearing action of gravity has erased all traces of the past. Here lies the giant black hole. It sits at the very center of the galaxy, amid clouds of dust and gas bursting with star formation, dense star clusters, and great rivers of gas flowing directly into its mouth. As massive as this black hole is, it will grow larger on a steady diet of stars and gas. Eventually, it will become so large that it will transform the galaxy itself. Today, our Milky Way galaxy is some 10 billion years old. It's mature, middle-aged, poised between the great eras of star birth and star death. But how will it change in the coming eons as it continues its journey through time and space? At the University of Michigan, physics professor Fred Adams is making a science of the future, following the laws of physics to the end of the line. By understanding astrophysical systems like planets and stars and galaxies and the universe like we do today, we can project into the future and actually see what will happen. It's kind of like having a new sports car. You can't help but get in the driver's seat and put it on the highway and see how fast it will go. This science of the future is being launched with a series of brand new tools on display at an international supercomputing convention in Denver. Supercomputers and cutting edge inventions in optics and software. These tools promise unprecedented insights into the fate of our galaxy. Already, they are helping scientists answer basic questions. How will this era of the stars play out? And what lies beyond? For researchers like Paul Woodward, the first landmark will be the fate of stars like the Sun. You can think about you know, the Sun's evolution as a fight against gravity. Gravity is what holds the Sun together. It's constantly pulling the material of the Sun inward. But the sun doesn't all just fall in because it's burning hydrogen in its center, in its core. That energy generates pressure that holds the sun up against gravity. But when that hydrogen runs out, the sun will partially collapse, and its core will begin to heat up, reaching temperatures of 100 million degrees. That spells the beginning of the end. Earth would start getting hotter and hotter. The oceans would come to a slow rolling boil, and they begin to evaporate. 
for humans and other creatures still alive.